Welcome back everybody to another Project Zomboid video. Don't mind me, I'm just here cleaning up the mess. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips and tricks that I wish I had known starting off Project Zomboid as a new player. Now, if you're anything like me, you need to traverse big distances in the early game so that you can get loot, or just trying to outrun a small horde of zombies like I've got here. Now to do this, there are a couple ways, very simple. So what you're gonna wanna do is just go ahead and right click anywhere on your screen and select the walk to prompt. And with this, whenever you left click again on your screen, you can then walk. Now utilizing this feature in conjunction with either the F4 key or this icon at the top right of your screen allows you to fast forward and speed up time. And you can also use this method to sneak by big groups of zombies leveling that skill or sprint using shift. Now controlling zombies in Project Zomboid is very important. And one way to do this is to utilize fire. Now by lighting a fire here next to this truck that I've parked in this location, we are able to lure a massive amount of zombies to our location. Now once this fire gets lit, we're gonna go ahead and hop into our truck. And once we're in the truck, switch to the driver's seat. The zombies can't reach us because it's blocked by this other car. We're then gonna turn on this siren right here. And once we've turned on the siren, it's only a matter of time until the undead start pouring in. As you can see, it's been about six hours now and there is no shortage of zombies. They just keep pouring in from every direction. So once one tip before you start doing something like this is to bring a plentiful amount of food, water, books, and stuff like that just to keep your character happy, hydrated, and fed during this, because it can take days sometimes depending on how many zombies are in the area. Coming in at tip number three here, and that is never to get overzealous when in combat. As you can see, I'm only fighting five or six zombies right here, but I'm doing it with a hunting knife, and I haven't checked the condition on it in a hot minute, so it, and I have to retreat which goes to show that being overconfident even at the best of times can lead to your downfall so it's better to just avoid this situation altogether check your conditions frequently and make sure that your weapons aren't on the verge of breaking and on to number four we're going to be taking a look at brake boosting in project zomboid now you might not know what that is but brake boosting in project zomboid is achieved when you press shift space and w at the same time basically what it allows you to do is travel at 130 miles per hour instantly it's a glitch in the game so the next thing we're going to want to keep in mind is uh, be careful of driving too fast because in situations like these when the weather is bad, you're more than liable to crash your car like I just did. And this car unfortunately is no longer useful, so I got to walk home. One way to avoid situations like these is to take the Sunday driver perk at the beginning of your playthrough. This perk doesn't allow you to go faster than 40 miles per hour when in any automobile. Now during your travels through Project Zomboid's expansive overworld, you are likely to encounter these large water containers. They can be picked up using this icon on the left hand side of your screen. These are huge, especially when the water goes out, for they contain 250 units of water. The same tool can be used for picking up various pieces of furniture and decoration equipment for your home. Useful, uh, useful tip. One caveat to keep in mind, however, is while they used to weigh only 5 pounds in previous updates, due to the latest 41.56 patch, they now weigh 30, so it's pretty much a necessity to bring a vehicle when hunting for these large sources of water. Moving on to tip number 6 here, these double fridges that you can find in gas stations and convenience stores all over Kentucky are very useful for they have two fridges and two freezers for a total of, I believe, 260 storage spots very useful when containing large amounts of fresh food or perishable food at the cost of their weight weighing approximately 40 pounds a half so once again you need a vehicle to carry these any significant distance generators in project zomboid are an extremely rare end tier item so when you find one be sure to pick it up now generators can be found in various warehouses and sheds any industrial locations really across kentucky's wide map uh, one thing to keep in mind when using generators is you want to fence them in so zombies don't attack them throughout your days when you're away, but you also want to be sure to ventilate them because the CO2 it emits is poisonous to a player, so if it's in a confined space that room will fill up with a noxious gas and you will die upon uh, contact for too long. So. One thing to keep in mind when setting up your generators, put them in a secure location, but put some windows or uh, ideally even put it on a second story uh, platform so that zombies can't attack it and it's emitting its fumes into the atmosphere versus a confined space in your home. But you can only really achieve that if there's already a staircase in your home or with level seven of the carpentry skill in building a staircase. Now tuning into the Life and Living channel on TV is extremely important during the first week of Project Zomboid because it allows you access to easy skill points that you otherwise have to grind for later in the game. Uh, the TV broadcasts every day at 6 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. for the first seven days of the game, covering various topics from fishing, carpentry, survival, 
and just overall very beneficial, especially when paired with the fast learner trait or skill books in uh, each of the areas. So it's definitely worth keeping your eyes on the TV for the first week, because after that first week, the TV stations all go off of the air and it is almost impossible to view all of these channels again. I say almost because many of these cho- uh, 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 fuck. What is wrong with me? Have I never fucking spoken before? Will I ever be I enough? It. Is any of this even worth it? Many of these shows can be found on VHS throughout Project Zomboid's map, however your chances of finding them varies, varies wildly depending on the playthrough. Coming in at number 9, did you know we are now able to tow vehicles in vanilla Project Zomboid and to do so all you need to do is go up to the back of a vehicle and then pressing V will open up the context menu. Now with this we just want to attach this jeep to this truck and that will allow us to then hop back into the driver's seat of this jeep and pull this truck to our base. And this works for any vehicle, whether it's working or broken down. Uh, also, utilizing brake boosting that we learned earlier, we are able to do this at fast speeds. Now, the tenth and final tip of this video, and quite possibly the best one that I'm here to give you today, is to never become too attached to any specific character or item in Project Zomboid. After all, the beginning of the game states, this is how you died. This wasn't the story of how you came to beat the odds and ascend to the godhood, no. This was a story of futility and the ultimate end, just evading it, I guess. I'm Uncle Stag, and this has been my uh, first Project Zomboid Tips and Tricks tutorial. Zomboid. Hope you learned something new. Uh, if you did, please be sure to like. Is it the G character? Appreciate it. If you didn't dislike it, I don't really fucking care. Uh, I'm Uncle Stag, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Mm, stream it. Let me see how you resurrect.